about stack structure of 8086, interrupt cycle of 8086, procedures and macros in assembly language program. First, we will see stack structure of 8086. What is the stack? Stack is a block of memory. It is a store temporary data. It stores the contents of the registers and also stores the return address of the subroutines. Stack contains a set of sequentially arranged data types with the last item appearing on top of the stack. It uses top-down data structure whose elements are accessed using the stack pointer which gets decrement by 2 as we store the, a data word into the stack and gets incremented by 2 as we retrieve a data word from the stack back to the CPU register. What are the stack operations? There are two stack operations, push and pop. What is push? Push means the transferring data from specified register or memory to top of the stack. What is pop? Pop means reverse of the push. The transferring of data from top of the stack to specified register or memory location is nothing but pop operation. So push is also called as insert operation. Pop is also called as delete operation. So the stack uses a last in a first out structure. It means it is a last in first out data segment. This means the data which is pushed into the stack last will be on top of stack and will be popped off the stack first. Here stack can be implemented in two ways. Either register stack, memory stack. Now we are discussing particularly memory stack. In memory stack, the stack is growing by decreasing the addresses. It's nothing but for every push operation, the stack pointer decreased by 2. For every pop operation, the stack pointer increased by 2 because the stack is growing by decreasing the addresses. The stack can be addressed by two registers. That means stack top element address can be calculated using two registers. What are they? Stack point register and stack segment register. And what is stack point register? It is a 16 bit register that contains the offset address of the memory location in the stack segment. The stack segment register contains the base address of the stack segment in the memory, which indicates that is the beginning address of the stack segment. The stack segment like another, any other segment may have a memory block of maximum of 64 k bytes locations and thus may overlap with any other segment. Now we will see one example how to calculate stack top address. In this example let us take SS value and SP value. SS value is 5000 and SP value is 2050. By combination of by combination of SS value and SP value pointing to stack top. So how to calculate stack top using these values and stack segment register which contains the uh, upper 16 bits of the starting address of the stack segment. So how to get the 20 bit physical address of the uh, stack uh, beginning address of the stack segment by, uh, by multiplying uh, 10 with SS value otherwise uh, that means uh, that 5000 in by in case of binary 5000 shifted to 4 times in case of binary number that will be shifted to 4 times 4 shifted to 4 times left and then add sp to ss value then we can get stack top address in this example stack top address is 52050 that is the present stack top address is it clear It means the location 52050H is already occupied that is previously pushed data is available at 52050H. The next 16 bit push operation will decrement the stack pointer by 2 so that it will point the point to the new stack top 5204EH and the decrement contents of SP will be 204EH. This location will now be occupied by the recently pushed data thus if a 16 bit data is pushed onto the stack the push operation will be decrement the sp by 2 because two locations will be required for a 
2 by data next we'll see the execution of bracket push x instruction results in a stack overflow here in this example ss 5000 sp 4 apps that is initial value of stack pointer is 4 apps so that pointing to uh, starting uh, address of the stack segment here in this example assume ax is equal to 2925 the next instruction is to be executed is the push ax the push ax means the content of ax registry is transferring to top of the stack after this operation um, 29 and 25 29 25 is moved to top of the stack then stack point is decremented by 2 initially 4 f's after this push to x operation the stack point value is triple f d next push to x operation again 29 25 is moved to stack top then uh, stack point is decremented by 2 after successive push operations when the stack pointer contains 4 0 switch any attempt to further push the data to the stack will result in a stack overflow if sp is equal to after performing the sequence of push operation if sp is equal to four zeros that leads to stack overflow then we'll see what is the effect on sp uh, sp for every push and pop operations here ss is 5000 sp is 3500 h and ax is 3557 first execute push ax operation then 3557 is moved to top of the stack first will be 35 higher order byte next 57 lower order byte then stack pointer is decrement by 2 assume next pop next uh, instruction is pop bx is nothing but uh, the present top data that is 3557 3557 3557 is moved to here the what is the destination bx what is the source stack top so 57 is moved to bl and 35 is moved to 35 that is the result of pop bx op operation so for every pop operation the stack pointer increment by 2 next we will see interrupt cycle of 8086 what is an interrupt an interrupt is used to cause a temporary halt in the execution of program the meaning of interrupts is to break the sequence of operation while the processor is executing a program an interrupt breaks the normal sequence of execution of instructions it diverts diverts its execution to some other program called interrupt service routine after executing isr ir it returns the control back again to the main program Whenever the interrupt occurred, the CPU suspends the current running program. The control goes to requested interrupt to execute the request interrupt service routine. After execution of the request interrupt service routine, again control will go back to main program where it was suspended. It will continue the main program. And what is the need of interrupt? Interrupts are particularly useful when interfacing I/O devices that provide or require data at a relatively low data transfer rate. What are the sources of interrupts? Three types of interrupts sources are here. An 8086 interrupt can come from any one, any one of the three sources. One source is an external signal applied to the non-maskable interrupt input pin or to the interrupt input pin. An interrupt caused by a signal applied to one of these inputs is referred to as hardware interrupt. A second source of an interrupt is execution of the interrupt instruction, INT. This is referred to as software interrupt. The third source of an interrupt is some error condition produced in the 8086 by the execution of an instruction. An example of this is the divide by zero interrupt. If you attempt to divide an operand by zero, the 8086 will automatically interrupt the currently executing program. So the 8086 it can receive the interrupts through the two pins nmi intr nmi what is nmi non-maskable interrupt input pin which means that any interrupt request at nmi input pin cannot be masked or disabled by 
enemies it cannot ignore whatever the interrupter received through the nma pin that interrupt cannot be ignored by the processor so next pin is intr pin whatever the interrupts occurred through the intr pin it can be masked using the interrupt flag if if is equal to 1 the interrupt can be handled by the processor if if is equal to 0 the interrupt can be masked so basically there are two types of interrupts in 8086 external interrupts internal interrupts external interrupts also called as hardware interrupts internal interrupts also called as software interrupts internal interrupts also called as software interrupts what is external interrupt these interrupts are generated by external device that is outside the processor example keyboard interrupt whatever the interrupts received from the external devices is called as external interrupt so it may be printer disk etc etc internal interrupts it is generated internally by the process circuits or by the execution of an interrupt instruction the interrupt instruction is int instruction whenever the int instruction is encoded suppose in our program if you want to generate an interrupt how to generate software interrupt by executing int instruction software instruction so this diagram indicates types of interrupts hardware interrupts software interrupts hardware interrupts also called as external interrupts software interrupts also called as internal interrupts hardware interrupts are maskable non maskable software interrupts are there are uh, either external or um, either software interrupts are 256 types of uh, software interrupts so what are the steps are involved in processing an interrupt uh, instruction by the processor okay first we execute the interrupt instruction by executing interrupt instruction to generate the interrupt next jump to the interrupt vector table what is interrupt vector table which contains the starting address of the interrupt service routines so then to get the interrupt service routine starting address so that's why it jumps to interrupt vector table then takes the cs and ip in the vector table and pushes the existing cs and ip on the stack existing cs and ip on the stack is nothing but present running main program cs and ip written addresses the those two values are moved to stack loads the new cs and ip value jumps to the interrupt service routine executes the interrupt service routine then comes back and continue the main program these are the steps are involved to execute to to, uh, to process an interrupt by the processor so what are the interrupt uh, response sequence of 8086 here assume an interrupt type n occurred whenever the interrupt type n occurred first uh, it will uh, the present assume here the present running main program cs value and ip value and status of the running program is moved to stack so psw program status what is moved to first we'll move to main ip main the running main program ip value and the main program cs value and program status what is moved to stack top then it will move to jump to interrupt vector table to get the uh, starting address of the request to interrupt then that uh, cs value isr cs value and isr ip value loaded into the cs and ip then the control move to the beginning uh, location of the isr value execute the interrupt service routine again control go back to main program by it continue the main program by restoring the cs value and ip value and program status status word of the main program then what is interrupt vector table interrupt vector table to store the starting address of the all the 256 interrupt service routines where to store to store interrupt vector table we need 1024 locations. If we store the interrupt vector table will be stored in the 0th segment of physical address space. The first 1k byte of memory of 8086 is set aside as a table for storing the starting addresses of interrupt service procedures. To store one address for the one interrupt, we need 4 bytes. Since 4 bytes are required for storing starting address of ISP, uh, ASPs, the table can hold 256 interrupt procedures. The starting address of an IP is often called the interrupt ISP. 
starting address of an interrupt service procedure is often called the interrupt vector or interrupt pointer therefore the table is referred to as interrupt vector table in this table ip value is just put ip value is put in as low word of the vector and cs is put in the high vector here this diagram indicate the structure of the interrupt vector table so this table will be stored in the physically zero eighth segment physically zero eighth segment of the memory address space in that uh, zero eighth segment it occupies first 1024 locations uh, it, uh, actually we need four addresses for one interrupt so, total 256 interrupts so that's why that's why we need total 1024 locations for all 256 interrupts for example first two uh, first five first five types so type 0 type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 are dedicated interrupts so type 0 is reserved for divided by 0 interrupt type 1 reserved for single step interrupt is nothing but trap uh, third one is uh, reserved for nmi interrupt that is type 2 then type 3 reserved for int signal byte instruction is also called as breakpoint type 4 is reserved for intu instruction is nothing but interrupt overflow to handle the overflow conditions and type 5 to type 255 total interrupts are 256 so in next decimal 0 0 to ff so here type 5 to type 255 are reserved for 2 byte instruction int type that's about structure of interrupt vector table then next concept we'll see procedures and macros we'll see what are the differences between procedures and macro what is a procedure while writing programs it may be the case that a particular sequence of instruction is used several times to avoid writing the sequence of instructions again and again in the program the same sequence can be written as a separate program called a procedure whenever the uh, sequence of instructions repeating instead of writing every time those instructions just call a procedures by using a call instructions whenever the uh, procedure is called control goes to the beginning of the procedure or subroutine procedures are also called as subroutines so the repeated instructions can be implemented using program using either macros or procedure okay a macro is a small sequence of code of the same pattern repeated frequently at a different places which perform the same operation on different data of the same data type the procedure is a series of instruction is to be executed several times in a program and called whenever required Pro macro and procedure the two concepts are, are similar and what are the exact differences uh, the macro code is inserted into the program whenever macro is called the, ma the macro code is inserted into the program uh, wherever macro is called by the assembler mm, program control is transferred to the procedure when called instruction is executed at runtime whenever the processor is called the processor is called by the call instruction whenever the processor is called control goes to beginning of the processor after execution of the processor again control go back to the called program next one one next difference memory required is more as the code is inserted at each macro call in case of memory memory space is more because for every call statement the whatever the instructions are assigned to the macro all the instructions are replaced with the macro name how to call the macro by using just macro name whereas in processor memory required is less because the program control transfer to processors here the processor call the call processor statement cannot replace with the uh, whatever the uh, statement assigned to the processor instead of that it go to beginning of the processor here i here in this procedure control goes to beginning the beginning of the processor so one definition is enough whereas that's why the program length is less in case memory length is less in case of processor whereas macro length is more memory size is more and in case of macro stack is not required at the macro call in case of processor stack is required at processor call because what is stack basically to stack is to store the written address of the processors in case of macro there is no control transfer that's why there is no use of stack in case of process there is a control transfer to beginning of the process that's why we need stack to store the written addresses of the 
procedures no overhead time is required because there is no control transfer in macros a procedure extra overhead time is required for linkage between the calling program and called processor parameter in macro parameter passed as the part of the statement which calls macro parameter passed in registers memory locations are stack in case of macro to pass the parameters to the macro in the same statement we can pass the parameters in case of processors there are so many methods to pass the parameters to processors what are they you can use global variables or uh, cpu registers and stack and uh, memory locations and using public and uh, xtr and keyword next cut in case of macro there is no ret instruction in processor there is any ret inst- is required so macro is called using macro name space arguments uh, list argument list or at a bandit optional uh, process is called using a call instruction call space processor name and what are the directories are used in the macro <coughs> macro endm local in case of proce- macro in case of macro macro endm directory in case of processor we need voc directive endp directive for directive near directive what is the syntax to define macro macro name space macro the list of instructions and the macro uh, one more list endm which indicates end of the macro similarly the syntax of processor is processor name space proc followed by procedure statements uh, processor name endp endp indicates end of the processor now let us see uh, an example program to demonstrate processors in this program there are two process are defined that is addition and subtraction here in the data segment this program actually to perform addition of two numbers and subtraction of two numbers so in data segment uh, two numbers are defined mm, num1 num2 are initialized initialized with 50 and 20 and add res that is the variable to store the result of addition scb underscore res to store the result of subtraction these two variables are uninitialized this question mark indicates uninitialized and data ends end of the data segment and also here in this the application requires stack so that's why stack segment is defined stack underscore seg that is the seg, stack segment name segment which indicates beginning of the stack segment then dw40 that means 40 words are allocated for stack uninitialized with zero and stack underscore scc and s end of the stack segment code segment move ax comma data move ds comma x the two instructions are used to initialize the data segment similarly move ax comma stack underscore scc move ass comma x to initialize stack segment next one move sp comma offset tos to get the uh, offset address of the top of the stack element then call addition call addition to call the addition processor control goes to beginning of the addition processor and perform uh, addition of num1 and num2 and store the result in uh, add underscore res then call subtraction then control goes to beginning of the subtraction processor if you observe here call addition you know the call addition control goes to begin definition of the addition processor after the last instruction of the addition processor is ret after that again control go back to may after call addition instruction then next instruction is call subtraction then control goes to beginning of the subtraction processor and execute the subtraction processor again control go back to after call subtraction instruction then move ah comma 4ch uh, the 4ch is the 4ch is the last function call the what is the purpose of the 4c to return to the control returns to the last prompt that means terminate the program so code ends and start that is the program to demonstrate processors now we'll see the program to demonstrate macros this program addition of two 16 bit numbers using macro first we'll see macro definition addition the macro name macro is the directive to indicate the divine macro nyn first argument comma no2 second argument result third argument move x comma nyn now first number nyn is moved to x move bx comma no2 no2 is moved to bx add x comma bx perform the add operation between x and bx and send the result to x move result to x x move to result and that is the definition of macro how to use this macro in this program assume statement data segment definition the data segment three variables 
num1 num2 are is res num1 num2 are initialized with the uh, uh, 2 16 bit numbers 1000 and 2000 res is uninitialized uh, there is the data segment next come to code segment first two steps initialize data segment and now how to call macro here there is a situation to call to call macro how to call macro using macro name if you want to pass the parameters just use the parameters addition space num1 num2 res so whenever this macro is called that the statement replay the statement replace with the what are the statements are assigned to the a label addition macro so then the it will execute the instructions are assigned to the macro that that means that those instructions perform the addition between two numbers and move h comma ch into 21 h terminate the program that is the program to demonstrate macro now we'll see object to process in 8086 push operation decrements sp is the answer because in 8086 stack the stack is growing by decreasing the addresses for every push operation the stack pointer decremented by 2 the answer is decrements sp when a stack segment is initialized then we should use both ss and sp yes the answer is ss and sp are initialized too. For 8086 microprocessor, the stack segment may have a memory block of maximum of 64k bytes. Answer is 64k bytes. The stack point register contains offset address of stack segment. If an interrupt is generated from outside the processor, then it is an external interrupt. In 8086 microprocessor, the following as the highest priority among all types of interrupts. Options are NMI, DAV, Type 255, Overflow. Which one is the highest priority? Which one is the highest priority? NMI is the highest priority. Answer is A, NMI. The procedures also known as subroutines. A macro within a macro is called nested macro. The 8086 supports a total of 256 types of interrupts. IVT stands for interrupt vector table. The INTR interrupt can be masked using the interrupt flag.